Hey everybody, what's up? Hope you guys are doing good today. Just out here in the tackle room today and I'm sort of starting to shift gears a little bit and to, you know, starting thinking about getting ready for the new season coming up. Um, I've got my first tournament coming up at Lake of the Ozarks in March. Um, in addition to the Bassmaster Opens, I'm going to fish the uh, Toyota series of the Central Division or the Plains Division because they've got a bunch of my, you know, home lakes here. we got Lake of the Ozarks, uh, Grand, and then Lake Dardanelle. Um, so it's a pretty close schedule for me. So um, starting to get sort of in that mindset of getting some stuff prepared and been working on tackle a, a little bit every day, uh, getting preparation for that. And today what I want to talk about is one of the key baits that I really think I'll, I'll be using a lot, uh, particularly in March and early April. And uh, that's a big spinner bait. And big spinner baits, it seems like, you know, and I'm going to do a lot of different videos on spinner baits coming up, but it's like, my favorite spinner baits, when we talk about that lure category, is I either like really big spinner baits or really little spinner baits. I don't use like the half ounce or three eighths that much. I just find that when I'm on a spinner bait bite, I'm really either getting them big or small. And in today's uh, video, I want to talk about these big spinner baits, which is actually my favorite spinner bait to fish because it produces really big fish in the pre spawn. Anytime that water temperature starts to get up close to 50 degrees, um, it's a bait you definitely want to have on anywhere in the country. It doesn't matter if you're fishing uh, clear water reservoirs, stained water rivers, you know, lakes that have grass in it. It's just a really good bait for the pre-spawn. And that's because in the pre-spawn, the gizzard shad, thread fin shad, herring, whatever bait fish you have in the lake that you're on, it's, they're at their largest size of the entire year. They haven't spawned since summer. They're mature. And that's why it's such a good bait to catch big bass. But basically what I want to do in today's YouTube video is I want to, I'm going to take you through my entire spinnerbait building process for my big spinnerbait setup. What I like to use this time of year. So I've got everything out here. I'm going to start out, um, the spinnerbait body I'm going to start out with. This is a one ounce uh, spinnerbait. It's got a number six willow leaf on it, number five Colorado. Now the setup on the thing, um, I use a combination of different, a combination of different blades. I'll use big willow leaf. Sometimes I'll use smooth. Sometimes I'll use hammered. Sometimes I'll use a big Colorado. A lot of it depends on the depth that I'm fishing and the water visibility. If I'm fishing a lake that's got stained water and I'm wanting to keep that bait fairly shallow, a lot of times I'll use a three quarter ounce, a big arm, big profile, you know, with two Colorados on it. But most of the time, if I'm fishing that water visibility, like between say 12 inches and three feet, I like the big willow leaf, uh, Colorado combination on there because it throws off a big profile. Um, you've got flash and you've got vibration. And the two sizes I use are the one ounce and the three quarter. And the, how I determine the size of my spinnerbait head is basically on my blade setup. It's not really the depth that much. If I'm using really big blades, you know, like the six or the sevens or the eights, I want to use the one ounce head on there because it's simply that these big blades will lift the bait so much that you need a heavier head to be able to keep it down a lot of times. Um, so I'm not really the wind or the clouds or the, excuse me, the wind or how deep I want to fish is not as much of a factor as the blade setup I want to use. So that's something you just have to experiment to, to get the most efficient size. So what I'm going to start out with, I'm going to show you how I tie my skirts. Um, on my big spinner baits, I tie all my skirts um, with three skirt strands on there. So I've got three, three skirt layers. And the reason you want three skirt layers is it throws off a, uh, you know, a really big uh, profile in the water. Um, if you use two skirt layers, I'm sort of getting everything rigged up here. If you use two skirt layers, um, a lot of times it makes that skirt a little bit too thin and, you know, it doesn't create, you know, that big of a profile, you know, for the bass. And it's all about this time of year, I'm looking for that big profile. So using more skirts, you know, it just gives me the, you know, a little bit bigger profile to put off to the fish here. So this is another deal. You guys want to definitely get into skirt tying because skirt tying will allow you to, to really maximize you know, the, how you can adapt to different conditions as far as, you know, different colors. You can put different amounts of layers in there and you don't, you know, re rely on factory skirts. But I take out, I've got my three strips together. I've got my skirt tying tool, got a little uh, clear uh, collar on there. Come through there. 
And here's another thing when you're tying skirts is important to remember. When you pull it through there like that, don't pull it <clears throat> like halfway through. You, don't, you, don't, you only want to pull it like that far. And I'll, and I'll show you guys why in a second. Got that far on there. Collapse it up. And I left my scissors out in the boat, so I'm going to have to pull this with my finger. So then, you know, take the ends of it off there. Like that. Both ends. <clears throat> so I've got my skirt layer set up like this. You can see that, see how far the collar is up on the end. And the reason you do this is because it makes the skirt flare out more. And what I do is I take it and I turn it upside down like that and center your skirt. And by, by making it longer on one end, it gives you a little bit more bulk and it gives you a little bit more length to the spinner bait, which makes it a bigger profile. So that's the way I got it set up there. Nice, big, bulky profile on there. The skirt strands are, let, are long and I can adjust it a little bit. And I'll show you after I put my trailer on it. So this is the basic setup here that I'm using. Color-wise, it just depends on the water clarity I'm fishing and the, really the time type of day. You know, I like, you know, white and chartreuse is hard to beat in most conditions. If the water's really dirty, sometimes I'll use just a real flat white, like three strands of flat white. Um, if it's cloudy, sometimes I'll use more chartreuse and less, you know, white. And sometimes if I'm fishing, you know, some clear water situations, like when that water visibility is over three feet and I still have wind and clouds that, that make the conditions good for spinnerbait fishing, I'll use like a combination of white and a clear type skirt. So I, I really just mix it up a lot with that. So the next thing I do is I don't use trailers that much on spinnerbaits except for during the pre-spawn. I like to use spinnerbait trailers in the pre-spawn because again, it increases the bulk and the profile and the size of that bait. So um, it's the only time that I do use it is when in the pre-spawn. And my favorite is the four inch Megabass Spark Shad swim bait. Um, you can use a lot of different trailers, but this is the one that I found out that works the best. So I'll thread that on there. And another thing about using the Spark Shad is that it's a bulky swim bait. So it, uh, it helps lift the bait a little bit, which allows you to fish it a little bit slower. So got that on there and make sure you got to really want to make sure these trailers are on straight when you put them on there. Okay, now this is the thing, this is the setup the way it is right here. Now one of the final things that I do with it is I want to, that's why I want the skirt long to begin with because I can trim it back. So I want to pull some of these layers off a little bit on the end. And I want to make them, this is when I do use my fingers, I don't use scissors, but I want to make it pretty jagged looking. And I don't want any skirt to really interfere with that boot tail on there. So I'll cut it down just a little bit. I'm not taking layers out. I'm just cutting the length, making it real, uh, you know, sort of different, different lengths on there. It makes it a little bit more natural. So that is my finish profile of my pre-spawn spinnerbait. This is a big bait. You know, for example, you know, here's a Mega Bass Vision 110 next to it. So, you know, you can see the, the size comparison. This is a big bait for big fish. And as far as trailer hooks go, um, I don't use a trailer hook on these big spinner baits when I'm slow rolling them very much because I'm fishing the bait really slow. And, uh, you know, the trailer hook on there a lot of times is really unnecessary because when they get this bait slow, it's almost like a jig bite. You know, you got a big five aught hook in it. They come up from behind it and get it. And very seldom will you miss these fish in the pre-spawn if, if you don't use a trailer hook. I mean, I will at times say if... if if it's, a, if it's a weird situation and I'm missing a few fish, I might put one on there, but most of the time I'm not. I'm throwing this setup um, on a really stiff rod. I like the Mega Bass Perfect Pitch. It's, just, it's a, uh, you know, got a fairly medium stiff tip on the things, a little over seven feet long. Uh, 20 pound test Seaguar and Vizex line is what I like to fish this bait on most of the time. And like I said, I'm fishing it just around any shallow cover down to five feet. Rocky banks, points, laydowns around docks, around stumps. It's great over submerged grass. Some of the biggest bags of fish I've ever caught in my career have come slow rolling these big spinner baits over the deeper grass flats, like in six to eight foot of water. I've caught some giants on all the TVA lakes and some of the Texas lakes, Florida, everywhere on it. But anyway, this is my one of my top 
pre-spawn baits, big one ounce spinner bait, number six, number seven, willow leaf, big trailer, big bulky skirt. Um, give them a try, man. Um, if you guys aren't fishing them, I think you're missing out on uh, maximizing your big fish ability. Uh, I would rate a big spinner bait as definitely one of the top three big bass pre-spawn baits, up right up there with jigs and jerk baits and, and big swim baits. So anyway, I'm going to be throwing it a bunch over the next month or so. Uh, give it a try. You know, start using it once that water temperature starts to hit that 50 degree mark, and then allow it for to some big ones for you. I have no no doubt it will. So anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, I just ask you to please hit that that like button. And hey, you know, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, man. That's one of the things that you know, getting subscribers on this YouTube deal is important to allow us to keep doing it to have the time to do it. So if you haven't subscribed uh, and you'd like to, you know, definitely I'd invite you to do that. And, you know, like I said, if you don't like it or something I say makes you mad, you can always, you know, unsubscribe at any time. So anyway, that's today's video. Hope you guys are doing good. We'll talk to you later.